picture of them arriving home, right? Lovely. But, but the press, all they saw was that little stain in her armpit. That's all they saw. And you think, oh, come on, you should be celebrating at least one member of the royal family can actually sweat. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! Later, we'll have music from the one and only Craig David! But first, she's an actor, writer and producer and the comedy genius behind British sitcoms uh, Motherland, Pulling and Catastrophe. It's Sharon Horgan, everybody! There she is! Lovely to see you. Yeah. Have a seat, do. Uh, this Scottish actor shot the fame in Cabaret and went on to star in Hollywood films and the hit TV show The Good Wife. Now he's back on the West End stage in Endgame. Please welcome Alan Cumming, everybody! <laughs> oh, wow. Energy, energy. <laughs> marvellous, marvellous. Have a seat, do. Thank you. Joining Alan in Endgame, this man has managed the rare feat of going from child star to one of our busiest actors on both stage and screen. Please welcome back, Mr. Daniel Radcliffe! And she's not just one of our most versatile actors, she's a force of nature. Here to tell us about her latest role in the nation's favourite, Call the Midwife, it's always a pleasure to welcome Miriam Margulies! Everybody. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Wait, are we still saying Happy New Year? Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. Really? Why not? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Uh, now, Miriam Ogles, is this it now? Have you been banned from daytime television? <laughs> well, I said twat or twat. <laughs> no, and apparently, it's one of the worst things you can say. Is it? Yeah. But well, they sent me a list of the things. And you uh, memorised it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the words on it was one I had never heard of. I don't know if you have. What was it? It, it was Munter. <laughs> Munter. Have you ever heard of that I, word? I, I yes. spell it. M U N T E R. Munter. Yeah. Munter. Yeah. I, I don't mean? know where it originates from, but I think it means an unattractive woman. Yeah. Or, oh. I don't know. It was oh, gender is it specific. Not? I think it can be. I think or, it can be not? either. I think it or, can be both. Yeah. I've never heard okay. of that. Well, yeah. has anybody heard it in the audience? Yeah. Oh wow. Lovely crowd. Yes, we've all been called that. <laughs> yes. What was, the, what was the TV show? It was called This Morning. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I... it, it still is. <laughs> it's <laughs> fine. Yeah. But actually, Sharon Horgan, you've yeah. had a daytime television experience. Yeah, I dropped a carrot on Sunday brunch and I said, shit! Um, is that a trouble. euphemism? Dropped a carrot. No, I did. Obviously, you know, you took a carrot, dropped some of it. And, and got frightened and said, shit. But was it in Catastrophe that your mother didn't like all the swearing? No, I think my mother was fine with the swearing in Catastrophe. I did an interview uh, once and the journalist said that I used the C word... Carrot. I, carrot. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I said carrot quite a lot. Oh, quick. And she... <laughs> He's like, quick. He's so quick. No wonder you're our favourite guest. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yes. she just she just <laughs> didn't enjoy that. I just blame the journalist. Uh, <laughs> now, Daniel Radcliffe, presumably you are familiar with uh, Miriam's potty mouth because, uh, or, or do, well, are you? Because I, you, were, you were in Harry Potter, but did you actually work together? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we absolutely. did. But I don't remember. I've been told there was a swear jar involved on set, but I I can't remember that. I don't even remember you swearing a lot in front of. I when was I probably think... careful when it was you, okay. but when <laughs> you know with the other kids, I didn't bother. <laughs> <laughs> Leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just talking backstage, if that's what you call that funny little grub right, grubby area. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it's 20 years since Harry Potter came out. So, the, since we started filming the, the first, first one. one. And your yeah. balls have dropped since then, <laughs> I can tell you that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a relief to us all. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, because they're just wee kids, then. We get it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
<laughs> it's just, yeah. But, but it's interesting because for Professor Sprouse, which, you know, you were in the second film and the last film. Yeah, right? I should have been in all of them. Yes. And that was a grave oversight, and I I'm holding them. you responsible. I told them. <laughs> but anyway, it was wonderful to be in the two that I was in, yeah. and I'm very proud of it. But you do get recognised as Professor Sprouse. I do. I, I mean, I think I've changed since then, but people do recognise me. And uh, funnily enough, in Lithuania, <laughs> I was. I'm, in Lithuania? Are you <laughs> Are you, uh, have you come just to see Professor Sprout? <laughs> I don't think so. Are the films called Professor Sprout and the Deadly Halogen? <laughs> no, but I was mobbed in Lithuania. Maybe because I was Jewish, I don't know. I'm the only one there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> stop, stop cheering now. Uh, but, but I just think that's incredible. Like, you're being mobbed in Lithuania and you're Professor Sprout. Imagine being this bad. I know. What... What was it like? I mean, it, it, it's weird and funny, and I think I, the best way to see it always was like weird and funny because yeah. it will, it, you know, and it ebbs and flows, and sometimes it's in your life a lot, and sometimes it's not in terms of getting recognised. And there's been lots of very odd moments. I was chased out of a science museum in Spain, um, and I was just like, <laughs> but it was sort of fine because everything was in Spanish there, and I couldn't understand anything inside, so it was time to leave anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, uh, but yeah. You got, re but someone thought you were something else in New York recently. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this didn't. This did not come up in in. With it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I did recently. So me and my girlfriend fostered a dog, uh, and, and it's, it, we sort of got our friends to adopt it. This is not necessary for the story. There's a dog with me. Um, <laughs> I I, we, I was on the street with this dog, and my, my girlfriend was in the shop, and so I was. And it was very cold. A hoodie. And I got my hoodie and my fleece, uh, my fleece hoodie, and then a big coat over that. And the dog was really cold, so I was like, oh, I'll just kneel by you and like stroke you and like try and keep you warm. And then. And, uh, and then I saw this guy like look up at me like ten yards away and smile, and I was like, yeah, and just carried on. <laughs> and then he walked past me and he came back uh, like he got about five steps past me and then just reappeared with a five dollar bill over my shoulder and just went, get yourself a coffee, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like my girlfriend came out and I was like, I don't think I'm I'm like I'm wearing nice clothes, I thought like, <laughs> like, like I don't know. Yeah, so I was I was very much I, 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 I that was a wake-up call. Apparently I have to maybe, you know, like, well, don't. Was your often. dog you on a string? <laughs> no. I do maintain because the person that owns the dog has also been mistaken for a homeless person with this dog. Oh. I think the dog just looks very cold and sweet and vulnerable. Don't blame and, the dog. No, I know. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so, the dog looks cold. You know, shivers and just do little. And <laughs> hungry. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> now, they are weird, the big franchises, because Alan Cumming, who did do the X-Men one... Yes, yes, I was yeah. in that. And, and I believe... Didn't you say at some point, okay. I will never oh. do... Oh, there you are. That you would never do a Comic-Con. And I, then I did, you well, did do a comic. No, I did, well, no, I've since I did one. I said I'd never do another one. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you, okay. Do you actually thing. walk away with a suitcase full of money? Yes. You, you do. Get paid in I, cash. You get paid in cash. So I, I did one called. Uh, I did. I'd never done it before, and I did one. It was called um, Collector Mania, and the emphasis was on the mania. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, what, what, and I was like, all right, and it was lots of money, and I'd fly me and my husband over, I saw friends in London, la, la, la. But then, guess where it was? A shopping mall in Milton Keynes. <laughs> And how many people? Like, well, it was lots. There was like a hobbit next to me. There was a Star Wars person next to me. Still is. And I met the real Uhura, the the, the original oh, yes. Uhura. And uh, there was the Chewbacca. Uhura. Camera. Yes. Uhura. You know, Star Trek. Star Trek. Uhura. Uhura. And, Can you uh, understand what he's saying? Oh. <laughs> you know, because your accent is really Pardon? strong. <laughs> so sorry, I can't understand you. <laughs> 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 I know. I'm going to talk like you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he left England to get away from that no, kind of thing. No, but, yeah, but I remember when you didn't have such a strong accent. What? No, what? honestly. Where? In America. Well, I was maybe doing an American accent. Ah, oh, that might be. <laughs> you were. You were. Like, was it acting? Maybe it's that. But it's fascinating, isn't it? Don't you think? Me, Because yes. you're Irish, <laughs> you're Scottish, you're English, and, and I'm posh. Sorry, go on, go on. <laughs> so, so everybody was there, all these different people from all different films and everything like that. And it was, but it was in a shopping mall in Milton Keynes, and you were in these rows. Sort of, you know, you were behind these desks, and they would say things like, 
Um, Alan coming, Nightcrawler and blah, blah, at number 13. It's a good time to go to him now. The line's down to six people. <laughs> <laughs> it was just mortifying. Yeah. And, uh, and then you had to wait and get paid, and you got paid in cash. And so, and then... I was so I decided I didn't like it. I didn't like being in Milton Keynes, and I felt there was all sort of. I felt a bit whore. Uh, I felt uh, a bit of a whore, and um, <laughs> and like, people would come dressed as me and X Men to to be. And I didn't know what to say to them, and so and they were nice and everything. But anyway, I went. I got the money, and I went back to the hotel, <laughs> and I got Grant, my husband. I took my top off, and I got Grant, my husband. I put all the money. It was like you know when you rob a bank. It was in little things like okay. that, little thing. And I put all the money all over me like this, and I made him take a photo. I said, I never want to forget what a whore I am. Right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> a whore. A whore, yes. <laughs> Mary Margulies has been delighted to again on television screens in Call the Midwife. It's uh, Sundays at 8 o'clock on BBC One, and you can still catch the Christmas special on iPlayer. Now, this... Are you now the Mother Superior? I am. So you're Mother Mildred. I call myself <laughs> Mrs Shapiro, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I am the only Jewish girl in, uh, in the convent, yes. And you love this job, don't you? I love it. And did you... I mean, you acti actively canvassed to be in called the Midwife. I went down on a lot of people to get that job. <laughs> <laughs> Time well spent. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. They all got out from under. They're <laughs> <laughs> um, like, stop, <laughs> OK. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I, I, I do love it. For. I do love it. <laughs> and listen, before we talk about it, we've got uh, a clip of you uh, in, in action. Is she well? She is in distress, as you might imagine. And the infant? Primrose has as yet to be reunited with her mother. Perhaps continued separation would be best for all concerned, if adoption is planned. Is adoption planned? Obviously. She cannot keep the child. She fears she cannot keep the child. I suspect her desires conflict with what she thinks is possible. You just informed me she placed her in a dustbin. Brenda is a broken woman, Father Duncan. She has always been a broken woman. She had a history of mental illness before she came to us. That does not mean she is devoid of feeling. I venture to say that it means the reverse. Mm. Oh, yeah. actually seen that before because I don't watch myself. Oh. And now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of overacting. You were very there. good. Kicking priest You're ass. Good. It was excellent. Um, did you Brenda did you believe is a that? Broken I woman. I, I love that. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a terrific series, and I love it. It is a lovely, lovely series. Yeah. But the thing about nuns, though, is <laughs> they... they... Oh, <laughs> Sharon, can you watch Call the Midwife, or does it like bring back kind of terrible memories of school. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I am a fan of nuns, honestly. My, my auntie's <laughs> a nun, and okay. she's a great, great person. But the nuns I was taught... I went to a convent school, so the nuns I was taught... I mean, the head nun was... A, I mean, a fiend. A, oh, was she? my God. She, she, she was about six foot two as well. I mean, she was enormous. And she had a twitch and a squint uh, <laughs> on the same side of her face. And she was full, like, old-school hellfire and brimstone. We all had to bring our Bibles to uh, assembly morning and afternoon, take them out. It was always the Old Testament. Um, uh, which is well, it is the best. stories yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> the Old Testament is best. Uh, you know that. But, uh, yeah, she, um, she was just incredibly strict and... and Did she hit you? No, she picked on me once for... Uh, you weren't allowed to walk on the back of your slippers. It was just one of the rules, cos it looked sort of slovenly. Oh, yes. And also, I drew a face on a diagram of a uterus in biology. <laughs> but <laughs> those two things combined. <laughs> when when uh, we, were, <laughs> we were in assembly, she called me out. She didn't say my name, but she talked about a girl, you know, who had done these certain things and, and, and said I was the spawn of the devil uh, and a child of Satan. And, and I remembered, like, it made... It, I, could, I remember feeling... She like, was overacting, oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Alan, we found a nun uh, connection from your school days. This is Canoosti High School, but these aren't... Clearly, these aren't real nuns. But it, that is really you. Ah! Uh, is that you? That's me. <laughs> Big bastard. Uh, uh, well, you know what to say. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there was a play called um, Bonaventure. 
Yes, and it was a play, a high school play. I had actually sexual relations with some of those nuns. Oh, really? <laughs> For we, real? We, we were struck that Louis Capaldi... by fumbles. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gay. <laughs> Okay. I'm confused. Are you bi? I'm bi. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> so bad. She's, in she's interested now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, bi is interesting. Bi is interesting. <laughs> but I now don't... you're married. You're not. No, I'm married. Yeah. And you're to a man. But you were married to a woman, weren't you? When I knew you, you were married to a girl. Well, you know me now. <laughs> <laughs> Not married to that lady. No, not, a lot, to not for like decades. No. Do you feel more you now, or I mean, don't you think it's interesting when you? Ish. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll stop talking about. It, but I, I just think it's fascinating. I, I really think do. I think it's interesting that people don't talk about it more, and that if you, I think you know, in our life in general, everybody wants things to be black and white, and yes. sometimes they're grey, and uh, I, they're grey for me. I've always been grey and I'm determined to keep them grey. Grey! Let's see if can play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. Thank you, Brian. I agree with that. Here of the grey. Here's the grey. Here's the grey. Um, because I'm working around the couch talking about school days, you think, oh, he's going to go to Danny Radcliffe and talk about it. Because you didn't go to school. I mean, I went to school. But, 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 <laughs> very yeah. briefly. Yes, I mean, yeah, well, I died sort of the first ten years and then, well, however long you go to school for. Yeah, yeah I, not very experienced at it. Yeah, and, um, and but yes, I went to school on set and uh, and just wasn't there very much. And it, well, it's one of the things I loved about Potter was because it got me out of school. school. Did yeah. you have to do any exams? Yes, I, that's, I went back for exams, which oh. sucked. Oh, um, yeah. so you didn't do exams so on you had set. To go back no, you to had an to go back school. to my actual school. And they must the have exam. just hated you when you I showed up. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Harry fucking Potter's back. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, yes, a lot of it, a lot of it. I think I was also probably, you know, a uh, uh, prick. I was a 14-year-old, you know, a teenager. So on some level, they were probably yeah. being... And I probably was as well. But, um, but yeah, it wasn't... And did they make lovely. you go all the way? Do you have to do A-levels and things? I dropped out. I stopped after AS level. So I stopped at 17. Oh. And, um, did you haven't got any A-levels, sorry. <laughs> you haven't you got any A-levels? I've got <laughs> AS levels if they count. What does that mean, they, they don't a, You do AS when you're 17. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, can I say um, hi to my daughter, Sivy, who's doing her uh, GCSE mark? It's not a radio week. show. We'll all see. We'll all see. We'll all see. We'll all see. I promised her. Good luck, Sive. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. 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 Sweet about that. It's not in. It's never going to be on telly. Yeah. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Good luck to her. I don't actually care. <laughs> <laughs> So good luck, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got no school photographs of Daniel Radcliffe, and I'm so sorry, I never thought we'd be doing this again, but uh, the viewers won't uh, let it go. The <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe uh, time traveller yes, thing, right? So and now, it is, it is bizarre. So, now, so there's all the old ones we used to have. No, I think that, that was the first one we ever no. showed. There's a, thing, there's a thing that happens when I come on this show where that people sort of uh, dredge the internet and f have found photographs of, of people that look like me throughout time. And it turns out there's a lot of them. Oh, and a lot of them that's, like, that's quite a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's... Yeah. Uh, that one's, that one's oh, uncanny. Yeah. Some of them, these, that's, these that's rubbish. Had, right? That's, well, that's quite... That, actually, that I is think, quite good, I suppose. I yeah, that's, that's good. That's, that's quite good. Fantastic. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, look, there you are, as a nun. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. I feel like getting less like me and just... No, no, no. With, like, a this, of this is still one of my favourites because you look so happy in this one. <laughs> I think this was... This was when you were time-travelling, yeah. you hit a really good bit of your yeah, life yeah, right. here. There you go. I think you were in love. Oh, that that <laughs> <laughs> yes, We've got some new ones. We've got like some new ones. I'm the members of my family. Now, now. weirdly, that, yeah. we found one of you. I think you're married to Robson Jerome. Oh, oh, do you not? Oh, wow. oh you don't. Oh, you don't. <laughs> That's a bad body of your life. Oh, that's a what the. <laughs> Would, yeah, no, that's that sad. Okay. This one is good. This is again another very, very jolly bit of his life. Daniel's really loving life here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, yeah, that is just. That is <laughs> 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 
We turn to theatre, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe, <laughs> Alan Cumming, together at last on the West End stage in Samuel Beckett's mm. Endgame. It opens at the Old Vic, I don't want to worry you, on the 27th of January. <laughs> <laughs> Till the 28th of March. So, um, I mean, you know, they know Endgame by Samuel Beckett. Mm. But uh, uh, sell it to them. Tell them what, what they need to know. <laughs> Thanks for giving us the hardest possible uh, approach. Yeah, uh, no, no. <laughs> it, but it is a hard... It's a hard play. Uh, Samuel Beckett plays are hard to talk about, but try. Well, <laughs> um, it's about... Go. Dare. Do you want it? Yes. And the end of the world. Yes. And disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, aloneness uh, against community. Yes. And... Lost uh, Hope. Lost Hope. Miriam's uh, also done Endgame, so chime in, yes. please. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sharon? Sharon? Anything? No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you notice that it's like a vaudeville act in hell. Yes. OK. That's and cool. you're ha you play ham? Yes, and I will be being a big ham as well. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hear it. And, Daniel, you play...? Clove, or Clove. Clove. Um, they are sort of... It is... It is... It is... You're four people in a room, two... I'm sort of Alan's... Slave. A slave and, and servant, so and we are just locked in this sort of relationship where we hate each other but can't tear each ourselves apart. Um, but it's funny. It's um, it is also hilarious. funny, and somehow that happens. And famously, there's the parents in Dustbin. Yes. yes. And Miriam, you played the mother at the National. I think we've got a picture of it. Great. There, there you, you are. Oh, at the National. It's a glamour photo. <laughs> <laughs> That's, 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 Tom that's, that's Tom Hickey. Oh, that's Tom wonderful yeah, Tom, Tom Hickey. Hickey. And did you have to be in the bin for hours? Hours. Did, yes, 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 hours. Did you? Did you? We've got, um, we've got um, what do you call them now? Not the Wait. dustbins, uh, the ones, that, uh, the trolley bins. Like we have trolley bins. bins. Oh. A wheelie bin. Oh, oh yeah. Rex is being used. Peely Wally, that actually. <laughs> did you not, did you have to, wait, you didn't have to stay in the whole thing. Sure, not the whole thing. No, we, no, we could oh, go up and oh, down. OK. But Good. It was very tiring, no, yeah. actually. It Does it have a pedal? Is it like a pedal bin? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what someone once said about my foreskin. Oh, what? Really? <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> Have you got a, a foreskin? No, no, no. Make a blame. Um, of course. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Have you got a foreskin? Loads of them. <laughs> <laughs> I collect them. <laughs> well, you know, there's that cream now that you can get. Uh, that's um, they make. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, foreskin. Can I just say that shout out to your daughter's in? <laughs> <laughs> I thought there wouldn't be time. There will. <laughs> no, do go on, Alan. There's a, there's a potion that you could get for your face that's made from foreskins. What? Yes. Why? I wonder what they did with them. Yeah. <laughs> to send them off and you know. Well, I'm sleeves. feeling a bit divided about foreskins actually. <laughs> Why? Because. Men are dirty, and they don't... <laughs> they don't clean round the rim. Oh, there you are. They don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know the word smegma? Oh, my God. <laughs> well... Sharon, are there any other members of your family that you would <laughs> like to give a shout-out to? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a feeling your daughter may not be watching this now. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, just, uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's end game. Feels nervous. <laughs> end, end, game. end game. Yeah. And end, end game. End game. Uh, Opening <laughs> January twenty eighth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's yeah. a wonderful play. Wonderful play. <laughs> wonderful great, play. Yes. Really oh, great. I know what I want to ask. You posted this picture on uh, on something. <laughs> what, <laughs> what What are you doing here? Uh, well, is, this see, is to do with the play, right? I was. Yes, yes. In the play, I'm blind and I'm. I can't. I'm in a chair. Uh, throughout it, and um, and so they're doing this thing where I have little um, little withered legs over the edge of the chair. Like so that that was a that atrophied leg. So that's a cast that they took of my real legs to attach the spindly legs to, and I was just pretending I was in some sort of model pose. Yes, uh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I am definitely going to come bit. and see it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 See the little legs. Uh, atrophied and legs. I'm like crossing my legs, my cr crossing my withered <laughs> legs. Oh, that's that's yeah. good. But it really is a Number great play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and. It, it's a great it... test of being an actor to be able to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Margaret. Yeah, no, 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 I have total confidence in both of you. Oh, You're you wonderful lying. actors. You. Foreskin or not. We <laughs> 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 both get foreskin, don't we? Are you saying that? And I'm talking about theatre. Uh, <laughs> 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 
first show back. Did it have to be this hard? <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, I do think it's interesting, Daniel, that theatre, what you've done is really clever because you've used it kind of to prove your mettle as an actor and to kind of reinvent yourself. Well, it also sort of, I think it makes you better. Like, you just, you, you have, um, it's really, it's hard work. And it's, and I think it, and I think it also gives you a lot of confidence to know that, oh, I, I am not just entirely a product of editors and directors and, and, and to, to know that you can in some way do it on your own and exist outside of that is, is, is really nice. And it's also fun. Like, you don't, there's, you know, I, I love film sets and I love being on them, but you don't get the sort of raw, like, rush that we're going to be... Well, that I've yeah. been dreading in, like, two weeks. But, you know, <laughs> you don't get that from anything else. Because, Alan, obviously, theatre is very important to you. Kind of cabaret brought you to America and all these amazing things. How many times did you do cabaret in the end? Oh, three. I did it in London uh, with Jane Horrocks, actually, who's, oh, yeah. who's playing the part that you played. Oh, is she? Yeah, Jane Horrocks and Carl Johnson's oh, I'd my love, dad. I must see that. And it's so funny, I was saying to Jane, like, you know, 20... Six years ago, she was my sexy co-star in Cabaret. Now she's my mum in a dustbin. That's <laughs> <laughs> show business. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the that's, acting industry for right. ladies. Yeah, for ladies. <laughs> well, like, that's... Uh, but I did it in London, and then I did it on Broadway, and then I did it again on Broadway just a few years ago. I went back and did it again just to poor, poor I die. <laughs> <laughs> and which time did you have the thing where it was really hot? Do you know the story I'm talking it's about? Always hot, Green. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, oh, well, well, when I got hit on the head? Yes. That was the, f the first time on Broadway. Oh. Okay. So what happened was I was, uh, I was going to do a film, so I'd gone to LA for a costume fitting, and I came back, and I, my, you know, on the plane, you get all funny, your tubes get all funny, so I did a neti pot. Do you know that little thing? You put salty water in a thing, and you go up like this, and it goes up your nose, and comes... You know that thing? Yeah, I know that I thing. Know. I love them. And then, so it's like, it's like a thing to clear out your tubes. OK. Uh, with salty water. Kosher salt, actually. Shout out to the Jews. That's good. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I was uh, doing the show that night, and I'm sort of lounging provocatively, you know, on the top of the thing. And you know, like when surfers get that surfers drip thing, a bit, <laughs> like an hour after surfing, suddenly this stuff gushes out. Well, I'm just lounging at like that, and all of a sudden, a gush of water just comes out my nose and down my <laughs> bare chest. And I'm like, wow, not so sexy now. <laughs> and so I kind of, you know, amble over to the side of the stage and blow my nose. And, and, then, uh, and then I sort of had to get down the stairs and back to the, into the play. And because it was a different route that I was taking, because I was now off the side, I ran right into a light a big, huge uh, light, and, and it went... Grr, 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 I made this huge divot in my head, and then for the rest of the, the first half, I was getting more and more woozy, and I'd, like, I'd go to open a door in my hand, I couldn't find a handle, and I'd be like, sunny balls, like this. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then what was hilarious is at the interval, I went up, I collapsed, and my, I went out of my dressing room and collapsed, and the stage manager came up to my room and stood over me like this and went, Alan, do you think you'll be able to do the second <laughs> to go to the hospital. <laughs> and, so, and so then, and so there were all these people suddenly were in my room, they're all freaking out, you know. And I had to go to the hospital and they were trying to get my clothes off. And I, and I was just, because I, at the end of the first act, I had a swastika on my bum and I lifted up my uh, coat and that was at the spotlight on my cheek and that was the end of the first act. Like, symbolised the rise of, you know, fascism. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and um, my bum was a conduit to a political <laughs> message. And, well, it's uh, been a conduit for a lot of things, <laughs> <honey>. <laughs> Uh, yes. and, uh, so anyway, I was like, they were all trying to get quick out in the car, so you've got to go to the hospital. And I was just getting wet wipes and going like this, and like, what are you doing? I said, well, the doctor might be Jewish and I'll be angry. I have a <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I got to the hospital, and it was indeed a very hot night. It was a summer night. And um, I was all like, I got tubes in me and wires and everything. And there was a lady who'd been in the audience, had fainted with heat stroke and was taken to the hospital and was in the next room to me in that same hospital. Wow. And so they came in, and I was like, mask on, and said, and there's a lady next door, and she was fainting thing, and, you know, blah, blah, would you go in and say hello to her? I was like, what? <laughs> and so, anyway, I heard them, and I'm in my trolley in my little, you know, stretcher on wheels, what do you call it, and with tubes and everything, and uh, I heard them go, you know how you're so sad, you're so excited to go and see Alan coming? And she goes, oh, I waited for months for my ticket, I can't believe I missed seeing him. And they went, well, here he is! <laughs> <laughs> Lovely song. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, I, here's the thing. There's a true story behind our final product of the evening. It's Sharon Horgan bringing us Military Wives. It opens on the 6th of March. And this is that famous story from a few years ago. Yes. The Military Wives Choir. Yeah. So, but it, it's... And it's that true story, but you have... they fictionalised it to a certain extent. Yes. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's inspired by that. It's inspired by this um, group of women on a military base who set, a, uh, set up a choir to sort of help take their minds off the terrible situation um, that their partners are in, and, and it, it was when they were sort of deployed to um, Afghanistan. But in the real thing, the documentary, Gareth Malone um, turned oh, up. The so we, uh, him Love and the story. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's not in it. It's it's myself and uh, Kristen Scott Thomas. We're, uh, we're the, the characters. We're we're uh, you're working with her? Yeah. What's she like? She's so great. <laughs> I've always disliked her, isn't she? <laughs> She's, I don't know her. No, you know, she's just from she's sort of almost as mad as you. Like, <laughs> well, I, I mean, sometimes they... Foreskin they, anyone? <laughs> and are you... And are you and Christian, are you re, are you based on real people or are you kind of amalgamation we, we, we're, of we're, we're an amalgamation. Both Christian and I thought we were too old for both of those characters anyway. <laughs> uh, I would often laugh by that, but yeah, she, yeah, we're kind of, we're, we're, we're loosely based. And it's one of those things, because the, it, it's something about groups of people singing, it is instantly moving. It is yes. instantly moving, like that documentary, I couldn't get through it, I just sort of blubbed constantly, but also because it really did bring them together. It really did sort of create this beautiful friendship, some camaraderie. And mm. We had it even, like, in, in rehearsal. Like, we didn't get a huge amount of rehearsal um, because our, our director, Peter Cantanio, he didn't want us to sing very well, which was not a problem, by the way. <laughs> um, but he was... Anytime he saw us sort of practising or whatever, you know, he'd sort of freak out and tell us to stop. Like, cos he wanted us to get better over time like they did in the choir. They started out with... Is this a nothing. play or a television No, it's a, it's a movie. It's a, it's a movie. Oh, it's yeah. a movie! Oh, yeah. oh, I really I really want to yeah, see this. Yeah. Well, you can see a little bit now. We've got a clip. Uh, this is uh, you and Christian Scott Thomas, I know. Um, <laughs> she's so lovely. She's so lovely. So I've She's very nice. She's nice. She's, she's very darling. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very and nice. she's okay. super funny. <laughs> Not convinced. <laughs> uh, here's the two of you uh, at loggerheads. Uh, everyone up. Here's your starting note. I'm going to count us in. Three, four. Shout, shout, let it all out. I'm talking to you. Come on, Come on let me in. Violent times. You shouldn't have to sell your soul. That's good. In black and white, they really, really ought to know. Okay, really belt it out this time. And can we hear the T's, please? Enunciate. You shouldn't have to shout, shout. Let it all out. These are the things I can do without. Come on. I'm talking to you. Come on. Look, I understand you want them to be passionate, but, but, but really, it just doesn't sound very good. But I'm having fun. And it's better that than they're sounding joyless and in tune. I, I, I don't think projection is our issue. I mean, all the top from that. This reminds me of when my parents got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Sing, can't you? Well, I mean, you <laughs> you saw and heard. <laughs> uh, well, no, not really. I, I think everyone sounds better together. Like, and and that's what made us really close. And that's why I kind of yeah. understand why these amazing brave women like wanted those choirs in the first place because it just brings them together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, but listen, you're very successful now. Uh, you've written Pulling, Catastrophe, Motherland, Divorce, and you've talked in in interviews about how you know you you're very open. You mine your own life for a lot of the the elements of these things. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky, like, with Motherland, cos I do the, the school drop and you, you hang out, you oh, know... Oh, the mums and... ..in the school yeah. playground and at the school gates. You would turn up to pick your kids and just sort of glance to your left and go, right, well, there's, there's at least a portion of an episode. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just there. It was like shooting fish in a bowl or whatever the saying is. <laughs> no, is it true? Is it true that the character that Diane Morgan plays... Yes. ..in, in the... That, that she's really closely based on somebody. She is very heavily <laughs> based on my uh, my very good friend, and and it's fine because she knows. And uh, <laughs> she didn't know 
like from the offset. Uh, <laughs> but once we filmed it, um, she I guessed. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I actually showed her um, a rough cut of it because I was feeling like, like I, she told me a story that is wholesale in there. Oh, um, wow. So I wanted to show her that that scene and. Uh, yeah, she was delighted. She she was absolutely fun. But some people, um, like there's one one mum at my kid's school who, for the whole first season, she's like, "When are you going to put me in it? You know, when when, I'm, when am I going to see mm. myself in it?" And so for the second season, we came up with this new character, and and it's like again, it's just her. It's her. And uh, one night when she was really drunk around in my house, I thought, well, I'll show it to her. Um, it wasn't that flattering, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, I took her bad bits. And, uh, and I, show I showed it to her and she was just like, and I was like, it's you. And she's like, no, I don't. I can't see it, babe. I just... not me. I think you... And it, what, people don't, don't see themselves. They choose what, you... to see what they want, don't they? Which is kind of lucky. But yeah. I'm talking of uh, mining people's lives for drama and comedy. Uh, Miriam Mogley's things happen to you. Like, your is it your house in near Dover? Oh, yes. yes. Actually, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, because I do rent my house. Well, and, um, that, gift, if you're yeah. interested... To other people. I mean, she, yes, she to other people. <laughs> um, and it's the nearest house to France, which is very important in this story. And it's four hundred and twenty-five pounds a week, and it sleeps. <laughs> it sleeps um, six people a for, for seven nights. It's clean. clean. Is there a cleaner? Cup? Yes. It, yes. No? Anyway, <laughs> one one day I got a call from the police, and they said, um, "Are you the owner of the gun emplacement?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> and they said, "Are you aware that it's been used as a drop for criminals?" Uh, to get rid of their drugs, or, you know, it, it's a drug drop. What? I believe that's the, <laughs> yes. the phrase. <laughs> and um, I said, well, of course I didn't know. What do you mean? And they said, well, people have rented it. They were a gang, a gang <laughs> from uh, <laughs> Liverpool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, they took my house <laughs> and they dropped the drugs in the bay, or they... And there was a helicopter that came on the roof. It's a flat roof, yes. you see. And they, they had cocaine. They had 30, <laughs> something like okay. 13 no, no. million <laughs> pounds worth of what? cocaine. What? No, no, it wasn't like a little thing. This was a massive... What? A massive, 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 massive. <laughs> 13 million... Jesus Christ. Pounds <laughs> of cocaine. Of cocaine. Is that, is that... <laughs> that's street food. No, I don't... I've never oh, taken not no, that was, no, that was, like, wholesale. Oh, wholesale. Oh, wholesale. wholesale. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm... It's wholesale, of course. <laughs> I was horrified because I didn't know. I mean, I don't have anything to do with the people that rent it. No. I just take the money, you know. Uh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> could have got more. and I was, I, well, I could get more for it because it's really lovely, actually. But, <laughs> <laughs> that was all the, that but what was upsetting <laughs> to me was when it was reported, of course, in the Daily Mail, um, all the you. people online said, oh, she must be in it. You know, she's part of the gang. Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> Miriam Escobar. <laughs> Very good. Right, it's time for music. And it's 20 years, unbelievably, since this man burst into the spotlight with his debut album, Born to Do It. Now he's back performing an exclusive medley. Please welcome Craig David. <laughs> Let me bring it on down. I was checking this girl next door when her parents went out. She phoned, say, hey, boy, come on right around. So when I got the door, you were standing with a bottle of red wine, ready to pour, dressed in a long black side, and they stood the floor, saying, why were you creeping around late last night? Why could I see two shadows moving in your bedroom light? Now you're dressed in black. When I left, you were dressed in white. Can you fill me in? Calls diverted to answer phone Red wine bottle, half the contents gone Midnight return, jacuzzi turned on Can you fill me in? Yeah, yeah You know what? Well, I got something to say, yeah It's Craig David, it's seven days, so check it out 
On my way to see my friends who lived a couple blocks away from me. As I walked through the subway, it must have been about quarter past three. In front of me stood a beautiful honey with a beautiful body. She asked me for the time. I said I could store her name and stick your number and a date with me tomorrow at night. Did she decline? No. Didn't she mind? I don't think so. Was it for real? Damn sure, why was the deal? A pretty girl is 24, so why she keen? She couldn't wait, said I'm a queen to let me update. Why did she say? She said she loved to rendezvous. She asked me what we were gonna do, so stop at a bottle of more and watch Monday. Took her for a drink on Tuesday. We were making love by Wednesday, and on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, we chilled on Sunday. I met this girl on Monday. For a drink on Tuesday We were making love by Wednesday And on Thursday and Friday and Saturday We chilled on Yo, break it down Break it down Since I met this special lady Oh yeah I can't get her off my mind She's one of a kind And I ain't about to deny it it's a special kind of thing with you. Yo, you know what? Some of them hate, some of them love this. Some of them hold the mic, are hopeless. Some of them chat, some of them try this. So I just take no notice, notice when I write bubble bubble like this. Jump around in my Adidas. Craig David Darwin, be vocalist, vocalist. Come over with Kadan Chris. Just give me that microphone uh, with a brand and flavor to bring it on. So I can lace a track, lace a song with a pre e Miss, come on, come on. Keeping it real, that's what I say. Singing a lyrical display, big shout to the peace from around my way, my friends, my family, and all the no makers. Monday, took a for a drink on Tuesday. We were making love by Wednesday, and on Thursday and Friday again. Saturday. On Saturday. Oh, it chilled on Sunday. Nice to meet you. Now, have a seat, do. Uh, Craig David, thank you so much for that. It's a pleasure, thank uh, you. Lovely. And that was, I mean, it's extraordinary, that was 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. Uh, those are the first two singles, weren't they? Yeah, we've rewind and then we had uh, Free yeah. Me in Seven Days, but it feels like only yesterday, it really does. Yeah, well, it does, listening to them it yeah. does, actually, because they really stand up. Yeah, and, and you know, I, and that's, I feel very fortunate that over the 20 years to have, like, the fans who've been there from the first time round, and then seeing still their... Alive. <laughs> they're still alive. They're still alive and kicking. They're, they're kind of... But then seeing the, 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 the older brother and sisters coming through and then, and then seeing the, young, the younger generation. Yeah, yeah. So I've got this wide demographic of people. But also, it's funny you say that thing, the first time round, because mm. you did that thing, you burst onto the music scene, you, you know, and like pop stars do, you burnt really brightly. Mm. And then, as these things do, you know, it, it drifted away, you went off to Miami, and we kind of knew you were in Miami and... Da -da -da. Right. And then when you came back, you were so instantly cool again. Like, <laughs> which it was like the world decided, Craig David, cool again. I mean, how did that happen? Do you know what it was? I mean, Miami was, I mean, it was great for me for the period of time I was there. Um, and I was throwing a house party there, um, which was... Cool but in your house? In my house. It started off as, like, a, ten people, pre-drinks, before you went out. Nice and easy. Couple, couple shots and we were good. And then it kind of word of mouth spread and people were like, oh, can I come to TS5? And they were texting their mates, can I come to TS5? And then it just sort of built to the point where I was, at, I was playing to like nearly 100 people in my home, which was, you'd think it was strange, but actually it was, everyone respected it like it was my home. But there was a moment where I remember we'd had a couple of drinks anyway and I'm playing my music, I'm on the mic, everyone's having a good time, drinks on tap, food there. I look over and I'm like, I swear there's Leonardo DiCaprio over there. Is that, is that Leonardo over there? <laughs> 
And I'm like, I can't be. It must be the drink getting me a little bit waved. So I just carried on, like, playing. Thought nothing of it. The following day, they said, did you see when Leonardo was in your house? I was like, no, I thought, I thought it was the drinks. I was, I was looking. <laughs> <laughs> it was just crazy to go from, like, ten people were my mates yeah, to, to Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, yeah, coming through. So but yeah, now, it it's so thing, weird. So you... you ran a house party, and in a way, Alan, what you, you've done a sort of house party, but yes. turned it into a thing. Sort of, like, I had, I, I had a dressing room, uh, I, I, had a par I used to have a party in my dressing room, and I called it Club Coming, mm. and, uh, <laughs> Actually, that's, and... That's the surname. That's and, uh, the surname, thank you. And, <laughs> oh, and, uh, and then now I actually have a bar in New York called Club Coming. It's, right. it's a, a cabaret bar. You've been, haven't you? I have, but you haven't had Leonardo DiCaprio, but you have had big names at it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Drop them. Yeah, Drop well, them. Well, uh, I think the story you're referring to <laughs> is uh, one time when Adele and uh, Jennifer Lawrence came and uh, they were having a good time and they went downstairs. There was a drag queen on that night hosting a thing. And uh, they went downstairs into the basement, the very unglamorous basement where the dancers get changed and the drag queens do things. And it's all crates of beer and things and that. And they were down there and, the, and there's a video uh, and of um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence getting her makeup done by a drag queen. And as she's doing this, Adele, they both had a few, and Adele comes around the corner and goes, she's the fucking face of Dio. <laughs> 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 now, Craig David, you yes. are on a UK arena tour. Now, is this to celebrate the 20 years? Is it? Are, we, are you going to be doing new music, or is it all, all the old stuff? No, we're going to do both. A, a little bit like the, the New Year's Eve part. OK, yeah, yeah. So it'll be, like, some of the nostalgia with the full band show, and then I'll switch into more of the party, TS5, house party that we're talking about yeah, in the yeah, second yeah. half. So people get a bit of everything. Presumably tickets for that, because it's later in the year, isn't it? It's, it's, it's spring? So it's April, yeah. April. Yeah. And you're going all around the country, and I know you finished with two nights of the O2, and one of them has already sold out, so... Uh... Yeah, so it's been brilliant. I'm really yes. grateful. It's, it's well, listen, brilliant. thanks for that performance, and good luck with the tour. Craig David, everybody! <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Tonight, we don't have time for the red chairs, I'm afraid. Uh, please say a huge thank you to all my guests. Craig David! Yeah. Sharon Horgan! Yeah. Alan Cumming! Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe! Yeah. And Miriam Margulies! Yeah. Join me next week with singer Michael Kivaluka, uh, comedy genius Jennifer Saunders, actress Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx, and the legend that is Sir Patrick Stewart. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye! Yeah.